Station Eastern on two for the PAO event. Could you give us another five count? That was great, thanks, and we are set to go in about a minute and a half. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. We are ready. Please stand by for a voice check from the participants at the SIMTI conference. How do you hear? <laughs> Welcome aboard the International Space Station. This is Dylan Mathis with uh, Rodney Grubbs from Marshall. We just wanted to, to uh, take a little bit of your time to talk about imagery from the space station. Uh, first off, I'd like to congratulate you all on a spectacular EVA last week, outstanding job. Um, but our first question starting out is, what images from the space program inspired you when you were younger? Well, one of the images that is most striking in my mind is the iconic Earthrise photo that Bill Anders took on the Apollo 8 mission. And that was a very important image to me because, first of all, it really was quite pivotal for several reasons in terms of shaping the environmental movement and also in making people start to think about our our significance within the solar system and within the universe and really how insignificant we are as humans and on our planet earth and also how fragile the planet earth was how thin that boundary of the atmosphere is how we really needed to protect it and how we really do only have this one true home and that image really did put that thought into people's minds some of which for the first time to help start that environmental movement people start thinking about the planet and the conservation in general and all of the resources back on earth that we really need to make sure that we protect And for me, something that stands out are the IMAX films of my childhood. So things like The Dream is Alive, Hail Columbia. Um, I grew up in a small town. We didn't have an IMAX theater, theater or anything. So I actually saw my first IMAX film when I went to space camp. And it completely blew my mind. Um, and I was enthralled with it. Just the fact that, you know, with the wraparound screen, you felt completely immersed. And every year that I went back to space camp, I saw the same movies, but I never got tired of them.
In, in this uh, recent past here on the ISS, we've done a number of spacewalks, as you know, very high profile one last week. And one of the iconic images that uh, people often associate with NASA is the picture of Bruce McCandless and the MMU, the man maneuvering unit, our archaic uh, nomenclature now, but, uh, but nevertheless, a picture of him in that what otherwise I think commonly people would assume as a jetpack. And uh, that is a really interesting and ironic image because it was actually one of the few times that a spacewalk was uh, was conducted untethered because actually when we do spacewalk now we're always tethered and so that it has become an iconic image of spacewalking and what it means to be an astronaut to be out there uh, alone and unafraid in a spacesuit with a jetpack on What can we do in an age where so many people seem to be skeptical about what they see and hear to assure them that what they're seeing from us as, as you explore space is actually real? And uh, can you also tell us where over the Earth you are about right now? Over. Well, I think uh, it's our duty to continue to just produce imagery of all types, video imagery and still imagery, and we'll do it with uh, integrity. And, uh, and the more we put out there, the more real it becomes to everyone. And I completely agree with Drew. And to add to that, I think adding the personal stories behind the images can do so much to really bring it home. And the emotion that we felt at the time um, kind of shows that there was more to it than just the image captured. So I know you guys occasionally get a little bit of downtime, not a whole lot. Um, but when you do, uh, are you able to watch movies and that type of thing? Over. Yeah, we can. We can watch movies. We have group dinners and that kind of thing. But I think one of the things that we prefer to do in our free time is really look out the window. And that goes right along with the photographs and the videos. We have, of course, this magnificent view from the cupola, which is a series of six windows around us and one on the top where we can see the Earth from many different vantage points. We have other windows throughout the space station as well. And as you can imagine, that view never gets old. It is really so incredible. I've only been up here less Less than a month now, and every time I go to the cupola and look back at the Earth and see how vibrant the colors are, how the layers of the atmosphere are so poignant, and it, it really is interesting. I don't think it feels the same as any picture, any picture I've seen or any video I've seen either. Just, but what we can do, taking pictures, taking videos of what we're looking at, is allowing us to share it with everybody else that isn't as fortunate as us to be here. So I see you have several cameras floating there with you, um, a still camera, a digital cinema camera, and a video camera. As we start planning for the Boots on the Moon mission and start thinking about uh, pulling that, uh, that miracle off, if we could only take one camera, if they say we only have room to take one camera, would you take a video camera or a digital still camera? Over. You no, know, going uh, back to the spacewalks we did recently, we're often uh, faced with that decision. Do we take a still camera or do we take uh, a GoPro camera with us? Some, sometimes we take both, um, but often that's not, con not con uh, convenient. Um, and the, we'll make similar decisions in the, in the future, but I think if you take a really high uh, quality, high definition video camera, you can always turn that into still images later. So, you know, if you had to, I think that's the image that you want to capture that really brings it to life. So in modern technology, we have new technologies like augmented reality and virtual reality. Um, can you talk a little bit about what some of these new technologies might enable us to do that was never imagined in the Apollo era? 
and uh, how that might help take the rest of us back here on Earth along for the ride with the explorers. Over. I think there's a, a couple different ways that we use things like virtual reality and augmented reality on board the International Space Station. One uh, is training. Uh, when we train for, um, actually, we we I mentioned that that jetpack in the event that we were to lose contact with the space station and our, there was a problem with our tether and we had to rescue ourselves with a jetpack, we actually have a simulation that we practice before we go on a spacewalk of. Uh, practicing using that equipment and we have a virtual reality headset that we use for that so we use it in training we also use it in uh, or intend to uh, use something called uh, HoloLens which is a payload that we're exploring how it could use to help us operationally doing maintenance tasks where the ground can see what we're seeing we often use over the shoulder camera views with just one of these XF305s like uh, we demonstrated here where the ground team is looking at what we're doing and provides that overwatch and that extra set of eyes when something floats away or if there's something we've missed and we often uh, need their assistance. With the augmented reality style, they'll be able to see exactly where we're looking, potentially provide overlays and direct instructions, point things out to us. And then something else that I've n noticed being up here is that uh, it would be, you know, when we go further and further, we go onto the moon and we go onto Mars, the ability to escape your environment, you know, right now we have this beautiful window, we can look at the Earth, but when we get further and further away from the Earth, we'll need that immersive technology, virtual reality, to reproduce the sensation of being at home and being in a different environment when we no longer can just look out the window and see the Earth below us. Yeah, in addition to that, we actually are using some of that at NASA already. I was a subject for a payload I think that was already being developed in looking at psychological support for astronauts on exactly that kind of mission that Drew was talking about. And my mom had actually delivered some test messages to help the group with it where it was a virtual reality experience, but people from my family or friends had actually had real recording greetings in their voices. And although it was all done with avatars in different environments that I could explore, it still had a bit of home where I could get a present or get a message from somebody else along the way. So I think there could be a lot of psychological value in that as well. And some of the payloads that we're working on right now up here, for example, the ISS experience will allow us to share this opportunity, this incredible opportunity that we have up here as astronauts with all of the world in exactly that manner. And I've been fortunate enough to see some of these previous products and then also a, a test version or a trailer for the ISS experience. And it is completely immersive. You feel like you're right here on the space station. I saw it for the first time before I came up here and it was an incredible feeling astronauts that had been up here while it was were, was being filmed and then saw it on the ground felt like they were right back up here. It is a very, very powerful tool and it's very exciting to me because it will allow us to share this exceptional experience with all of our family, our friends and with the entire planet. So, uh, pardon the expression, I'd like to zoom out a little bit and ask you big picture wise, what is it we're doing on space station that's going to help us get to the moon and Mars? What things are we learning? I would say one of the most important types of studies that we're doing right now are studies of human research on our own selves. We are learning the effects of microgravity on the human body and how we can mitigate those effects and what countermeasures we can develop to make sure that people can be sustained in microgravity for long periods of time. We want to make sure that once we land on Mars, we're going to have the strength and ability to actually explore the planet once we get there. And then as well, the psychological fortitude to undergo such a long trip away from all of our support structure. So to me, that's one of the main reasons that we're, uh, or the main ways that we study that. There's also technology development for life support systems that we'll need for long duration, as well as just testing out the operational environment and learning how we can best operate our sparing posture, how we can do repairs and things like that. So it's a really fascinating time to be aboard the International Space Station.
And you know, the International Space Station is also a test bed for commercial uh, partnership as well as international partnership. And, and, and in my opinion, the, the most important is international partnership. And that's a key feature of the Artemis program and our return to the moon is that we'll be a, a a commercial and international partnership, and, uh, and this is where we're testing those uh, those processes, those uh, those concepts, and we're building the relationships now uh, between the space agencies that will be essential to get us there. So I've wondered when you uh, go EVA for the first time and you step out. Um, how do you separate all of your training and all of the time that it took to prepare for that moment from just the awesomeness of it? Does it take your breath away like we could imagine, or is it terrifying or parts of all of the above? Over. Well, that's an interesting timing for that question, since that, exactly that happened to me just last Friday was my very first spacewalk. And I would say it is a combination of everything that you said. We have so many hours of rigorous training on the ground where we have rehearsed everything that we do in the suits and using the tools that we use all underwater in training in Houston. And so we have this muscle memory, which is really nice to rely on in that kind of environment. So when I went out the hatch for the first time and Christina was already outside, she was waiting for me. And I looked down and I saw my boots, only my boots hanging out and then the earth below. And it was such a spectacular image. And we tell ourselves that, we tell each other that before spacewalks as well, to just make sure that we actually take a moment to look back at the earth, to enjoy and appreciate the magnitude of what we're doing and really just take a moment to appreciate all of that. And I think it's easy for all of us to get very caught up in our work and make sure, you know, we want to make sure that we are getting the task done and accomplishing the mission but what we try to do is balance both. Christina, Jessica, Drew, we're uh, about out of time, but we wanted to take a moment to thank you so much for your time out of your busy day, and uh, we will hope to see you back in Houston uh, one of these days sometime soon. Godspeed. Well, thank you so much, Dylan, and it's been wonderful speaking to you guys today. <laughs> Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all the participants at the SIMTI conference. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.